We are live. We're going to be talking about stopping the generational cycles of sin, shame, and sickness. <clears throat> and at the end of this, we're going to be praying. These are the times where high priests and priestesses are fighting in the atmosphere. And unfortunately, we don't usually know that, so we don't know how to pick it up a notch or two in our own prayer. So that's part of what we're going to do tonight. We're going to do it together. Include your family. Include your your body that you are normally in with, you know, your body of people, your church, um, whatever you feel led, because we're also going to do identificational repentance as well. This has been a battle to get this out here, and I was like, all right, Lord, you must be going to do something. So I have a high expectation, because when it's that tough, it's usually he's doing something. So I have a high expectation. So the scripture on the screen says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Now, that I, I say we claim that because we have Christ in us through his spirit. And he said, go into all the nations. He gave us all authority to cast out the devil, to uh, heal the sick, to give sight to the blind. All three of the Gospels give a different rendition. The first three uh, give a different rendition of that go out, but it's all those things in combination, go out. Baptize and make disciples. Part of our call is to make you disciples in, in warfare. Can I just say it? It's time to get up. It's time to get a holy indignation against the enemy. Enough. It bothers me so much when I look across the room and see so many of us suffering mentally or physically and, and constantly being crunched down by past hurts and wounds, you know, rejection and all kinds of stuff. I got to battle that myself a lot. And, um, and I, if I didn't know who I was in Christ, I would just lay there a puddle. But I know who I am and I know what he put in me. He put a warrior in me. That's the Holy Spirit. It's in me. I can't quit if I want to. And believe me, do I not want to? But it's in there, right? And I just know, you know, we had a neighborhood outreach this weekend. Yeah. And what we kept hearing was we just needed somebody to lead us. We've been wanting to do this. We just, so there you go, guys. God calls the foolish things to, to confound the wise. Right. We might look like a bunch of goofies to everybody else, but he's called us up to lead. And people are just waiting for a leader. Mm -hmm. They're just waiting Amen. for somebody to rise up and say, tell me how to kick the devil's butt. Mm -hmm. That's all that they're waiting for. Yep. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the verse here speaks of <clears throat> the purposes of Jesus Christ at great length, if you were to break it down. And Jesus fulfilled these words that the prophet Isaiah said when he came to earth as a man and as God, and he took the cross on our behalf, praise God. We don't have to do that. He took the keys to death from Satan by which we can all live in eternity uh, with God if we choose. It's all about choice. It's all about choice. He made a spectacle of Satan on the cross and gave us the authority to do it as well. The problem is we... By the time we understand we're in the warfare, we're in so deep, we're exhausted, we can't get up to fight. And that keeps happening. But yeah. when you have a team of intercessors around you, they're stirring the spirit up in you. The spirit of God is stirring in you. He, I heard this, this faint little whisper for two days. I'm here. Remember what I called you to do? And it was so faint and so low, but I could feel it in me because it's my DNA. Oh, it is my yeah. DNA. Amen. Yeah. It hasn't always been my DNA, but I've learned to walk in it. I've learned to be, you know, brave in Christ, oh, not of my own accord. That's good. So he sent his disciples out into all the world to teach what he commanded to do and what he did. I believe this. Satan has held the church in bondage long enough. That's right. There are people rising up and waking up and saying, no, Jesus did this. I'm going to do this. Jesus said, do it. I'm going to do it. That means we cast out devils. Bottom line. That means we go up and lay hands on people. That means we speak in some weird tongue. That means we do the Jesus thing. Right? It's through Jesus that, we're that we are released from the curse. But I want to break this down to you about the curses. Because we got a wrong understanding of curses. And it's taken me a while myself to get not only knowledge of it, but to break it down and believe it myself. Because religion will tell you that curse is broken. There are no curses. The world will tell you something different. You can look around and see that's a lie. Your life will tell you something different as you watch sickness climb from one generation to another generation and land from family member to family member. And you broke those curses and they just keep coming. Yeah. There's a reason why they keep coming. So write all of 
creation is waiting for man to manifest God's glory. Amen. You know, we heard a message from Isiag one time as you walked. I don't I didn't catch the whole message. I was so in awe of what he was saying. And then I started seeing everybody say the same thing. Because who knows, you know, God doesn't just give one person revelation. He's it all to us, right? Praise God. Um, so we're released from the curse of the law. And it allows us to break all the curses that are consequences of our sin. And, and from a fallen state of, of man. And I think one of the reasons we're, we're captive like we are is, first, last week I saw this in you guys. I, I see this hunger in, in the eyes of some of you that it's just like, Jesus, talk to me. Jesus, oh man, it's, it's intense when you see that in the eyes of somebody. But then I see this, uh, this people that were so empowered last week. So empowered, and then you hit the backlash this week. Yeah, and that happens. It happens. We got it. You got it. It happens. Huh? We have got to be a, a chain of of righteousness that will, will will help each other to pray through those hard times. We've all got to get there. We. I don't know what it's going to look like. I know some <laughs> of us have been been given apostolic assignments, things that we need to do, things that God's called us to do. We can't do those without prayer help. Okay, God gave Moses a choice to give to the people. All right, and they were to choose life or death. This is so simple. And I pray that everybody on Facebook and from today on that see this actually get this <coughs> understanding. To me, it's just like a no brainer. So he said, choose life or death, blessing or curses. In this choice, God said, you can follow me and you can do as I command you to do because it will bless your life. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm a I'm a, a taskmaster, but because I want to bless you. And I know the spiritual laws that are in effect. So he says, it'll bless your life and it'll lead to life. Or you can do things the way you want to do and suffer the consequences. Anybody? Yeah. Anybody tell their kids that? Uh -huh. Right? A curse has power because of the consequence of sin. A curse has power because it's in the spirit realm, active, waiting to land. God wrote his law and released it. It's done. He said this, and it's not going to change until Christ returns. I want to bless you. I'm going to paraphrase it. Stop being stupid. I want to bless you. Stop being stupid. Okay? So, so a curse, by definition, is an invocation of evil or injury against one's enemy. How many of you know, when you don't love God, you sin. When you sin, you're not a lover of God. If you don't love God, you're his enemy. Okay? We're not talking about these things, but we're going to talk about them tonight. As practiced in Bible times, cursing was the opposite of a blessing and should not be confused with profanity. Right. Okay? Right. I'm going to read a little excerpt out of an encyclopedia real quick. It says, in pagan beliefs, curses and blessings were linked to the ancient pagan belief, we really want you to hear this, that the spirits of the gods that they worship could be invoked, okay, to act on behalf of a person who repeated certain incantations or perform certain deeds such as a sacrifice. It was thought that a spoken cure or a spoken curse possesses an occult power to work calamity on one's enemies. For example, in some pagan cultures, curses were written on clay jars and then they were smashed, symbolically initiating or affecting the intended curse. Mm -hmm. So curses are in effect today. Mm -hmm. There is God's curse that he has said, these are things that are gonna happen if you don't do what I say. Not because I want, but somebody's got to guide us. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to tell us how to live life because we don't know how. Right. So he gives us these standards. I don't even want to call them rules because he says it's a standard. It's just a simple standard of living by. None of us get it without Christ. Mm -hmm. We all do dumb things before that. Mm -hmm. So there are still many believers that do rituals and curses. And can I tell you right now, they're gathering to curse you. They're gathering to curse you. They're definitely gathering to curse us. They scroll these websites, Christian websites, and they look for those who are moving in deliverance and healing. And they send stuff your way. I'm going to talk about why that can be effective and why it can't. Okay? But they, they do rituals and they pronounce curses via spells and incantations. Do you believe that? Have you seen that? Have you ever 
YouTube videos and look how they do it, especially those who do uh, voodoo. Um, yeah. I can't think of the name of the voodoo, but there's several. We talked about this all through the class. We talked about all those different types of mm -hmm. curses and witchcraft curses and stuff. There's also curses from our own mouths coming out of hate. Mm -hmm. What does the Bible say? We have life or death in the, in the, in the tongue, tongue, right? Mm -hmm. And those who love it will eat of it. Mm -hmm. If you love hate, you'll eat of hate. Mm -hmm. If you love hate, you'll speak hate. Mm -hmm. If you love love, you'll speak love. You know, we, we, we have a power. Think about this. Do we not have the power of God in us that resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead? And I just tell you, I don't get this right 90% of the time. I just don't. I, I, I have a big mouth. I, not out here, no. <laughs> but you know, I just like can go around mumbling, and I have to catch my words, and I have to say, "Lord, I'm sorry." I spend a lot of time repenting from my mouth. I'm getting better, but I'm not where I want to be. Can I just be honest? I'm just not where I want to be. And I look at your post today, Mr. Jerry, about let loose. Uh, not today. Not today. I'm gonna reel it back. That was three times on Facebook today. The enemy tried to entrap me. Another one you saw. And uh, I was like, I'm not going to do it because I might be speaking my words, <laughs> typing them, but they're still words, right? right. Mm -hmm. So these curses are evoking a demon that might be in them, but either way, they are worshiping them. Yeah. So we have Holy Spirit. When we ask for blessings on a person, he blesses us if the availability is there, right? But if it doesn't, if he doesn't land that blessing on the person we're blessing because he's working something over there. It doesn't matter. He'll bless us. He'll bless those who bless those who curse you. Because that's what he says he'll do. So we can be assured that if we bless, it might not land over there because God may be working on something, but it'll land on us. Right? Does that make sense? Can you say that again? If we bless somebody and say we bless them and they're not in a position to be blessed. If you, ever, if you ever listen to people just throw blessings out there all the time, and it isn't because it got stirred up in their heart to bless, they just do it. But maybe that person's living in sin and God's like, no, I've been working with them for 20 years. They ain't given this up yet. They're not getting that. Whatever. And I, I don't know. I'm not going to give you an exact example. But you'll get blessed. That's right. Because that's just what God says. You bless those who curse you. And you're going to get blessed for that. You're, even if you don't see anything in the natural come, you're going to feel it. Your heart's going to be blessed because you did the right thing. I sent a text message out today doing the right thing. It wasn't easy. It's called humility. Yeah. You just, you just take, I'm not going to say the high ground, I'm going to say take the low ground. You just crawl yourself to a place of repentance before the Lord. Because you're, you're not going to have anything on the end of it. If, the, if, you're, if you're cursing people, and, and we got to watch our mouths. I saw it today. Mm -hmm. I watched somebody curse the president. Mm -hmm. And that was one I, did, I wanted to fire back on. A believer. Somebody who knows better. And I didn't say anything. I started to even privately respond, and I didn't do it that way either. <laughs> but I had to reel it back because I'm smarter than that on a Tuesday. What is that button that you push that takes back all those? I, I got that worn out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'll delete one is one. Yeah, no. How about no more face. Facebook? <laughs> How about unfriend you? Uh, right. Oh, how chicken is that, right? No, I'm going to stay the course. Yeah, I just want to say, uh, I don't know if everybody knows it, but on the 25th of this month, in relation to what you're talking about, it's supposed to be like 10 or 15,000 witches who want to buy a, a president. On yeah, the they've been doing it. Yeah, that's why we have such spiritual warfare right now. Yeah. And it hasn't stopped, but it's really bad right now. And they're proud about it. And half of the, half of the satanic church is doing, well, the whole satanic yes. temple is doing it, but half of them, well, we're not even going to go there. Okay, but you're right. It, and that is a part of why we're teaching this right now at this particular time. So the question is, do these types of curses have an effect on a believer? Do they? Because I think that's the problem here. If we don't think the curse can touch, it's a curse without a cause, it cannot light. Everybody's got something in them, come on. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's got something. Everybody's got something in their bloodline. And, um, and even if it doesn't land and do what the person cursing you demanded it to do, you can feel it. And that's what I want to show you tonight, especially Jezebel and witchcraft type of curses. So Jesus said he did not come to do away with the law and the prophets. 
all right? But he came to fulfill them. What, what does that mean? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Right. That is not the curses. That is the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. And then Paul said in Galatians chapter 3, For as many as are of the works, and we'll show you the law curse thing, are, as of are the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Curses everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law. To do them, praise God, we are delivered from that. That curse of, of Judaism is broken out from us. We are engrafted into the beloved through the blood of Jesus Christ. But that's the curse. That's the curse that was broken. All right, and I'm going to give you a scripture to prove this. All right, in case you've ever, because you got to get this in your heart. You've got to know the truth of God in this subject, so you will fight it. If you don't know the truth, you won't fight it. So it says, um, "Cursor are all those who do not continue in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them." But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Okay, so that's the curse that was broken. Amen. Before Jesus made a way for uh, Jesus made a way for all of us to go to God. Am I right? Yeah. Everybody can go. Yeah. That's right. But they have to. Want to go? Choose. Exactly. All right. The Jews still have to keep the law. That they haven't surrendered yet. They don't believe. Some of them do, but you know, for the most part, they don't. And if they did not keep all the laws that were commanding them in the Levitical law, they would not see paradise. They would live forever under a curse of damnation because they didn't keep the law, both on earth and after death. Jesus broke that curse for all of those who would come to him in faith. Right. That's the curse that's broken. Now we'll back it up one more time. But you have all authority in Jesus Christ. Does Jesus name and blood break curses. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Is it yours? Is it in you? Do you have that authority too? Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, there is this misunderstanding with so many people on this particular topic, including myself. I have spent years studying this out because this was really hard for me coming from a bound mind of religion. Yeah. Dealing with this was cool. very difficult. You ever met somebody that's so, that has religion but freedom at the same time? Yeah. And they're yeah. like this? That double-minded man need not ask for anything. That kind of person. <laughs> you got to work your way out of that into solidity. And you know what it came to me? I felt like the Lord said to me one day, will you just make a decision and believe it? Pick a scripture, make a decision to believe it, and believe it. Just stop questioning it. If you got it, you got it. If I quicken it in you, it's true. Leave it alone. Right? And, and I do. And I don't sit there and go, I got all the right answers. I just stop doing right. this thing. All right? So when one looks at the entire world... And the state of the world, it's obvious there are curses. Now, Revelation 22, 3. Lock it in your mind. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Are we there yet? Because my understanding of that scripture is that's the second coming. That's the return. Right. Yeah. When the land will no longer be under the curse. That's right. Right? Okay. So I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Spend some time with daddy. And we're working on this because the church is under curses. Because of their behavior. Because of their actions. And then if they break their own stuff, they got curses traveling down the bloodline. And I know it because I see it in my family. I see it in my, my husband's family. Genesis chapter 3 reveals to us how the curse came about. And I'm not going to give you all that because y'all know it, right? And so Adam and Eve messed around. They chose their, they got selfish. That's the bottom line. They got selfish. Isn't that what we do? We just get selfish. Right. I know God said, but who cares? This feels good. Yeah. Can I just tell you how I many people are? I mean, they tell me flat out, this feels good. Yeah. I got to do it. Yeah. You know, when I'm eating chocolate to stuff my emotions, it feels good. I got to do it. You know, <laughs> and I just, and then I might reason it out with, well, it ain't vodka. You know, I mean, I don't do that, but I'm just saying. <laughs> you could, right? No chocolate will kill you. <laughs> chocolate will definitely kill you. Um, so they walked away from their first love, all right, and they fulfilled the lust of their flesh. Their eyes and other senses were seduced. Eyes and other senses. Jesus said, if at all possible, even the elect shall be deceived, which is seduced, okay? So we have to be careful of that which feels good is usually not good. Their eyes were open to that which of which God tried to protect them from, and that's what he, I believe he does with us. And then they hid from God because of fear. And when he found them, he had a conversation with them about uh, the consequences of their sin. 
Do you realize that? God said, where are you? Do you know why they hid? Does anybody? Because I always hear the shame thing. No, they hid because they were afraid. That's the spirit of the fear of the Lord right there. Maybe if we had the spirit of the fear of the Lord in our churches, we might find a chair to climb up under during an altar call mm -hmm. and sit there until we truly have repented. Mm -hmm. Until we're true, right? Mm -hmm. I know some people have had to operate in that, and I'm telling you, it changes your life. When I got in the spirit of the fear of the Lord, I didn't realize I didn't have it until I got it. And then there I went, go. whoa, what a sinner. You know, even then, how self-righteous, mm. how I'm just, I'm just, I just think my state of being where I would like to be, my mind tells me something different. I just don't think well, any of us are where we're ever going to get when we get there, but we can do better. We can do better. We can, re we can receive the spirit of the fear of the Lord and let it come into us. Let it make a change in us. So we love each other. I think it's, that's the spirit we need to love each other. Yeah. I think we're lacking love because we don't have the love of God in us perfected. That's scripture. Um, okay, so I'm not going to read all this to you, but you do know that I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception and pain. Uh, pain will go forth on child. Okay, so does that still happen? Yeah. Any women in here? <laughs> Did it hurt? Oh, yeah. All four or five times? Oh, yeah. Okay, so there's obviously still a cursing effect. If anybody thought the curses were done because of the scripture I gave you in Galatians, no, no. Wow, those are smarty pants. Nobody? Well, that's awesome. Maybe that's why I had to believe something different so I could work it out in me so I could be convinced myself. Because I just really did. Just I'd been taught that that scripture meant there were no more curses. Until I started to look at it and went, well, then why is all this thorns and bristles here? Why yeah. is there sicknesses? Oh, yeah. It's all a result of the curses. Yeah. Do we have power of that? That's what we're missing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and skip Genesis 3, 15 through 2, 19. But to put it bluntly, Dad said, it's going to get real tough out there. Okay. You messed up. Son, daughter, whew, it's going to get hard. I gave you paradise and you blew it. Yeah. Right? And uh, you made a poor decision. Right? How many times have we done that? Kid, you're 20. Get out. <laughs> you know? You got to go now. Yep, go live in your car for a while. Do what you got to do. It's going to get tough out there. You should have broke the rules. That's the bottom line. It's simple. Isn't that simple? Mm -hmm. I just think it's so simple, but we just complicate it all. We don't make it simple. God warns us how to live. The consequences will be if we choose wrong, what they will be if we choose wrong. So I'm not going to read all these to you either, but not, note them down if you're not aware. Deuteronomy 27, 11 through 26, that reveals the cause of the curses. Okay, what they, what they will, what causes those curses to come forth. While well, chapters 28, 1 through 14 reveal the blessing of keeping God's commandment. And Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68 reveal what the curses are. Okay, we're going to break those specific curses off of our bloodlines tonight. Specifically, after we've talked to God a little bit about this. All right, so these curses are enforced in our lives with the permission of God. Because he's the one in control of this. And we see it with Job. We see it with Peter and Jesus. Does that mean God doesn't love us? We might think that, but that's typically not the case. It's not. It's just that we don't understand God. And we don't understand authority. We don't understand parenting. We don't get it. But God isn't like schizophrenic like we are as parents. He said, and it is, and that's just the way it is. Deal with it. You know, pray enough and beg me and plead me. Maybe I'll... You know relent and he will relent with our prayers but that's because he's already planned to do that right you know he says that already it's already in his word mm -hmm. if you will turn i will mm -hmm. but we don't so he don't mm -hmm. and then we blame god for everything the standards of the ten commandments found in exodus 20 are still in effect they've not been done away with the people try to say the law is gone because jesus came no that's not what jesus no. said he fulfilled them in law and i'm going love and i'm gonna make it real simple if you love god you stop sinning yeah. i believe that's in the bible too you right. just quit you just do. And people go, well, how do you do that? Well, get delivered. Yeah. If it's a demonic issue, get the demon out. Mm -hmm. If it's a flesh issue, talk to your soul till it submits. Mm -hmm. If if you if you got a lust issue, get an accountability partner. Mm -hmm. Get on the phone. Text somebody. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody, I can't do life by myself here. Mm -hmm. This this is too strong. And keep hitting it with the word until you win. Yeah. The word is the battling ram of God. Mm -hmm. And we just Beat that thing down till we win. What about this? What about you're so inflicted in your soul with wounds and hurts and traumas that you deal with things like self-hate, self-infliction, um, 
you know, just just the, the, the inside stuff that isn't acting out in a physical sin, but it's all in your heart sin. Right. Again, it's the same principle. Get help. Get help. Deliverance doesn't always get rid of that. That's casting a demon out. Deliverance doesn't always handle that piece. You've got to work it out with God through faith, getting healed. I'm telling you, I've been here. There's no place I have not been in this emotional place and, and still have to work it out at times. And the enemy knows who got you. He already knows it. He's smarter than we think. We need to give him a little bit of credit for the ability to be a very powerful po foe. Po <laughs> so John 14, 15, verse 21 and verses 23 through 24. If you love me, Jesus said, keep my commandments. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. We don't hear these messages. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. And we get to get the manifestation of God because he loves us and we love him him right because he loves us and we understand his love we love him back that's what the bible says so jesus answered and said to him if anyone loves me he'll keep my word and my father will love him twice and we will come to him and we will make our home with him amen he who does not love me does not keep my words and the word which you hear is not mine but it's the father who sent me and if we think about some of the things that Jesus did when he said, you brood of vipers, you hypocrites, and turn the tables over. Guys, that's God. That's Jesus fulfilling God's word to do, right? That's right. Jesus is not this friend of sinners. He's not sitting at the sin booth with you. He's not sitting at the casino pulling the handle. He's not going out to get a prostitute. He's not watching pornography with you. He's not having adultery with you he's not bowing to the idols of money with you those are what sinners do jesus doesn't do that he comes and says would you like another way are you tired of living that way come to me all who are weary and i will give you rest amen i love that scripture i was tired of sinning i was tired of hurting from sin i was tired and when you're tired, you quit. <laughs> and then you just give it up. Right? That's what he's saying. Are you weary of sinning? Amen. So That's good preaching. So <laughs> that was good. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Well, get me out there in the park one day. So so what? So so let's look at the generational piece and then we're going we're gonna have plenty of time to pray, praise God. Have you ever heard this statement, 1 Kings 15, 3? I could have been here for hours looking this stuff up and finding other analogies. I decided to stop right here and not get goofy. So it says this, And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. His heart was not loyal to the Lord, uh, to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. Let's just talk about David for a minute. What a winner. Perfect, wasn't he? Wasn't well, King David just so perfect? Oh, wow. <laughs> right? <laughs> Somebody's going, that's blasphemy. What Bible are you reading? No. But here's what he was perfect, Dad. For all into daddy. That's right. He got it. Read the Psalms. He got it. Mm -hmm. I'm really good at crawling to dad. Mm -hmm. And I understood for the first time recently what it means to be a man after God's own heart or a woman after God's own heart. It's because you're after God's heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not because you're perfect. It's not because you're not an idiot. Don't do dumb things. It's just because <laughs> you get it and you could you grovel. Mm -hmm. When my when my dad says, Hey, send a text and repent for that one. I do it. I don't want to. <laughs> My flesh says, uh, what about their stuff? And he's yeah, around yeah, there. You go. You it. Right? Yeah. We got to justify it. No, you can't justify it. You're never going to be able to justify sin. The more that you try that, the farther from God you get. Mm. So the word he the walked word. in all the father, all the sins of his father is echoed throughout the book of Kings and Chronicles, most of the Bible, as well as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. Right. One time when I was reading that, I thought they messed up the, the Bible. I thought, because I was like, didn't he, wasn't that the same? Didn't they do that back here? <laughs> right. and, this, and I really got confused. I had to feel my way through, figure out what was going on and realize <laughs> this was generational. Exactly the same thing. Same words. So the word, uh, that, uh, so although we may not see it written exactly like this, we do see it following 
uh, the past of their fathers. And I didn't put the scripture in there, but the Bible talks about visiting the sins of the of the sons, right? The sins of the children. Somebody quote that out to me real quick. Somebody's got it. Uh, Third and fourth generation. Right. Sons and the daughters. But, but let's, yeah, find it, and then, then we'll go back to it, because I didn't get it in here for some reason. So although we may not see it written exactly like that, the cycle of sin will never, I want you to hear this, the cycle of sin, write it down, will never be defeated in a bloodline through willpower itself. That's right. Never. Mm, good word. Never. Can you say it's that the, again? The, sure. The cycle of sin will never be defeated in a bloodline through the power of self-will or willpower and self. Mm -hmm. Never. Right. You cannot break this on your own. Right. It's it's too ingrained in your DNA. Mm -hmm. it's, you can't do it. And um, there are generationally inherited sins as well as cultural sins. And the prophets of old were aware of this and they consistently stood in the gap. Mm -hmm. And I want to show you, in case you don't know this, and I think most of you do, but I just want to show you. So when we move into repentance, you're, you've got your faith built up. You know this is how you pray and you understand it. So they confess their sins, the prophets did. They confess their sins, personal repentance. The sins of their fathers, generational repentance. And the sins of the people, cultural repentance or identificational repentance. In doing so, there were occasions where God relented and reversed the curse, extending mercy to that generation. Now is that scriptural? Why does God visit the sins of the fathers and the, of, the, of the children for four generations? Do you think that that's God going, I'm going to linger the sin over you? Or do you think it's something God knows because he knows the end result? Do you think it's something God knows because you sin, because you committed adultery, because you smoked, because you're an alcoholic, that your family won't be? That you won't pass that down until you get delivered? And then I get to bless all of your generations? Yeah. Until then, you're going to instruct them in the ways to go. And it's either going to be the ways of God or the ways of man. And so he knows. I believe that is one piece to this. There may be more. But I believe that's one part of it. So then we see this in the scriptures in 1 Samuel 7, 6. It says, so they gathered at Mizpah. They drew water and they poured it out before the Lord. You know that part about Paul saying, I poured out like a drink offering. This is, this is what he's talking about. And they poured the water out and they fasted that day. When was the last time you fasted for a day for your for your generations or for your family mm. or for your, your nation? And then they said this, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel at Mizpah. We have sinned against the Lord. They all came together. And see, I believe that Trump can lead that for us. Any president can. But I believe somebody needs to start talking. He's got enough. Yeah. He's got enough uh, Christians around him. What's going on here? And if he's, if he's identifying sin for the nation, he should be repenting for the sin of the nation. Mm -hmm. That's got to come. Mm -hmm. If he don't drop the pride, it's going to be hard for him to do that. Mm -hmm. That's, That's going to require humility. Now, I'm not bashing him no. because I know God put him on the throne. <laughs> right, right. And that's period. That's all we need to know at this point. Anybody else want to bash him? I'm taking my hands off of that one because right. I know God put him on the throne. I know what the vote happened. I was there. Go ahead. Um, Exodus 25. You must now, um, okay. You must not bow to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, who will not tolerate your affection for any other God. And I lay the sin of the parents upon the children. The entire family is affected, even to the third and the fourth generations of those that reject me. Okay. And then 34-7, I lavish my unfailing love to a thousand generations. That's right, to love me. I forgive iniquity, rebellion, and sin, but I will not, but I do not excuse the guilty. I lay the sin of the parents upon the children and the grandchildren, the entire family, is affected even the children of the third and fourth generation. Okay, wow. so how many children do you see affected <laughs> because of your sin? Yeah. If you were to just be really honest about the state of your children, what was your state like mm -hmm. before you had children? Mm -hmm. Did you ever get them to the cross before they become of age? Mm -hmm. We missed it by a year with my son. Mm -hmm. And he fell into something, much like we have fallen into, much like both of our bloodlines have fallen into, because it happens. Because there's an age of accountability and you can only hold on for so long for them. And then they got to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. And then once they've sinned and you're sinned, the forces are tougher to get rid of because you're talking.
coming down, especially if they're believers. And that's what we see happening Sinners. a lot. They're believers yeah. and they do it anyway. So they confess their sin was against God first. And they confess that their sin was idolatry. Because at the time they were worshiping Baal and the asterisk. People sin much the same way today. Right? Abortion. Can I just tell you what that abortion clinic did I talked to you guys about last week? And I'm, I tell you, we got to get on the phone with the city. Because it ain't okay. They put a wall up. They put a, they put a, uh, 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 like, what did I say? Uh, like a mesh, brown a mesh. Temporary screen. Like a temporary screen. You can't see through it. And it was so high that you couldn't see that building at all. And it's funny that happened because I've been battling those walls around that place mm -hmm. for months. But those walls are coming down. And I've said some other things I won't say publicly here. Because <laughs> people won't get the spiritual part of it. And I might go to jail. So I'll just be quiet if that ever should happen. <laughs> but I went by. We went by and went. So like, are you kidding me? And the whole place was surrounded by pro-lifers out there praying. But they blocked the whole place off. Just so that you can't see them. And, and you can't see the building now. So you can't see the big plant. Is this like a one-story or two-story? So, huh? Is this a one-story one story, yeah. And they put that high? That's that high. And so I'm going to write Debbie Lesko and the councilwoman over there and find out how she, how they're getting away with that. Because they know it's code. There's no way they're allowed to do that. It's that high. I mean, it's way past code. So I'm glad I noticed it today because I shouldn't have been in that area. But I just happened to be. And I happened to look. And there it was. And I'm like, okay. Well, we're going to tell on somebody. Can I so we'll see how, how long that stays yeah. up. Can I ask where this is? Yeah, 59 to Thunderbird. 59. Eugene. Eugene. So, it's yeah, it's just Eugene. tucked away right in there next to the hospital. and all Right the behind the fries. I have to drive by because my doctors are over there. So people sin the same way. They practice worshiping other gods, including Baal and Ashtoreth, which are the gods of Jezebel. We talked about this last week. Are done in different forms. Uh, aborting their babies, uh, live for fortune and fame, practicing every form of sex and pornography, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. The psalmist said this, we have sinned with our fathers, we have committed iniquity, we have done wickedly, and Daniel cried out, O oh Lord, to us belong the shame of face to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, because we have sinned against you. Now can I tell you, coming from a prophetic place, it doesn't take much for me to weep for our nation and just be absolutely broken that we let it go on like this. It bothers me a lot. We've got to get there today as a body of Christ, period. You don't have to be a prophet or an apostle to be broken for the sins of this nation yeah. because our children are suffering <laughs> tremendously because of it. So this is why identification. So I'm wrapping that into our own personal stuff because you are the saints of God, because a lot of you are in ministry, and because you are called. So you might as well get with it with us in here and just break that stuff up too. So... It is biblical to confess our sins, the sins of our fathers and the sins of our nation, so that they may, so that we may pray for them and each other and be healed. Confessing your sins, praying for each other leads to being healed. God's commandments are too mysterious for us, are not too mysterious for us, and they're not too far off away from our understanding. On the contrary, they completely make sense if we would simply stop rebelling and ask for understanding. Mm -hmm. His commandments make sense. We become a nation who doesn't want to know about commandments. And then Second Chronicles, you guys know this mm -hmm. scripture, chapter 7, but just listen to it while I say, When I shut up the heaven and there is no rain, or I command the locusts to devour the land, or I send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. When was the last time you've heard that scripture quoted with the first verse I gave you? When I shut up the heaven. Can I tell you that Enoch talks about there being portals? For the four portals? For the, for the weather. And one of those portals is used for <coughs> judgment. Weather comes at times and judges. So for us to not believe that happens, is a, it's, it's, it's not a good excuse. And then he says this, and, and he says, I'll heal the land, and now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and my eyes, my heart will be there perpetually. God's eyes oversee his word. They perform his word. You feel the weight in the room, or is it just me? Because it feels like it weighs a ton back here. Do we have no music going back? Do we don't have anything back there, huh? So God made a way for backsliders to return and be blessed. That, that, that's basically um, to return and be blessed. He knew before we knew 
that we would sin and turn away. You know that, right? God knew before you knew that you were going to sin and turn away. He knew you were going to sin and turn away. So don't allow the shame of your past to keep you from coming to the Lord. Um, so now it shall, be, it shall come to pass, when all these things come upon you, the blessing and curse which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God drives you, and then you return to the Lord your God and obey his voice according to all that I command you today, you and your children, with all your heart. <laughs> Did you get that? God knew you were going to backslide. He said it before they did it. And when you get over yourself, when you realize this ain't working out so well, then you can come back. And when you do, uh, I'll be, I'll, I'll bring you back from captivity, and uh, and I'll have compassion on you. Amen. And I'll gather you again from all the nations. Now I'm not talking about this from a, a eschatological or a theological perspective. I'm looking at it from a spiritual, personal perspective. Right? Because that's personal for us. Mm -hmm. it's, I know what it means theologically. I know right. about the Jews coming back and all that. But that's not what we're looking at. We're almost done. So what do we have to do? We have to cooperate. Is it hot in here? Yes, absolutely. Why are you hot in here? The air is cool. so cool. 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 Okay. So we have to cooperate with God to get free once we've t returned to him out of our captivity. Hear me again. You've returned out of your captivity. How many backsliders in the house? <laughs> Okay, so you've returned, just one, you re <laughs> we're all on the up your plan now, but we've been down that way, going that way. So when you return from your captivity, you're dirty, you're messy, you got shame on you, you got ancestral messes on you, you got cultural sin on you. And he's saying, but I'll take care of that when you come to me. When you come and you repent, he, he'll take care of that. When we come out of captivity, we got to cooperate with God to get free. I say I came out of captivity. I had to get out of drugs. I had to get out of alcohol. I had to get out of smoking. I had to get out of me. I had to cooperate with God. It didn't just happen. And for those of you who did just happen, look again. There's something else that didn't just happen. Right. <laughs> something that just happened, but there's some more that didn't just happen. All right. So um, sometimes we have to pray and fast because some types of demons and some types of flesh only come out and only die with prayer and fasting when jesus came up on the um on that young man on his disciples they're always freaking out and we can't deliver them and dad's upset so dad comes to jesus your disciples couldn't do it right and it says then they brought they brought him they brought him to him to jesus and when he saw him immediately the spirit convulsed him and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming at the mouth so he asked his father how long has this been happening to him and he said from childhood i think God, jesus wanted us to see a key here yeah. from childhood and often he has thrown him both into the fire and the water to destroy him mm -hmm. can satan bring destruction to your life can he kill you well that's what he's doing if he burns him or drowns him yeah so um and he says this uh, if you can do anything, but have compassion on us. And Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the father of the child, of the child, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. This is a generational spirit. This boy was inflicted from youth, probably from birth, from a generational spirit. The father, I believe, I help me with my unbelief is is a deaf and dumb manifestation of doubt. It's double-mindedness. Who knows what the rest of this bloodline was like? And this man would have come to the end of himself. Most likely he would have been ridiculed from his peers. He would have probably spent all of his money, like the woman with the blood issue, spent all of his money trying to get his son some help. And all of a sudden, something in him says, oh, I sort of believe maybe this Jesus can do this thing, but I don't know, you know. And have you ever been there? I believe. I know I'm supposed to believe. I'm a believer. I should believe. But I, just, I don't know if I believe. I'm not sure I believe. What do I believe? Right? We're all there. Right? So this, But that is a manifestation of a deaf and dumb spirit. His statement shows us double-mindedness. And it's a mind, a mind-bending spirit. So when Jesus... Now this was interesting. Jesus sees the people coming running. And he rebukes the unclean spirit. Saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit. I command you come out of him and enter him no more 
Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, still threw him to the ground, made him look like he was dead. And But Jesus picked him up and he arose. And I've seen that spirit come out of somebody and lay there looking like they're dead. And people were walking around going, is he dead? What's, What's wrong? Is that? That's a, that is uh, Mark 9. Mark 9, okay. And so they're walking around this guy and he's laying there with his eyes wide open looking dead. And this scripture came to my mind. I was kind of giggling like, maybe he's going to breathe. But I've seen people stop breathing in deliverance. You've seen some some things where people have, you've seen articles where someone so died in the middle of deliverance. So I always say, don't die on my watch. And, uh, <laughs> but later in private, this is what's important. Jesus said to him, well, it's all important, but he said, when he had come out into his house in private, his disciples asked him, why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, this kind only come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Can I tell you, sometimes your flesh won't die without prayer and fasting. It's not just demons that got to go out. Sometimes you got to flat. You you got to look. You got to get off that sugar addiction. I know for me, if I'm gonna get off the sugar addiction, I just got to not eat for a few days. Period. I just have to force it out that way. So God has a plan and a purpose, destiny for everyone. He says that in Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. He says, "For I know the thoughts I think towards you," says the Lord, "thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope." Then right. you will call me. You will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and you will find me and you will search when you search me with all your heart. So we got to search the Lord with all of our heart and we have to ask him, you know, where's the, we have to look for that appointed and, pro, and appropriated uh, kingdom destiny for us. It's not going to just pop up. We have to look for it. All right. We have a part to play in it as, um, as a matter of fact, it says in Hebrews eleven six. 6, everybody know the scripture? But without faith, it is impossible. You guys are going to feel the weight because we're coming to the to the end here. So God has made an eternal covenant with people. I want you to hear this. We broke covenant with Jezebel last night. But all people that would choose to have, to, to have him, uh, the privilege of this blessed covenant, if you would choose it, has a relationship with him. It's in covenant. We're covenant kids. Are we covenant kids? Right. Yes. I'm, I, I'm covenant with my husband. There's nothing that's his that isn't mine in a healthy covenant. Everything that's mine is his in a healthy covenant. If we're in a healthy covenant, everything he's ordained and purpose for our lives is ours. We got to reach for it. We got to believe for it. We got to know him for it. We got to know our identity. You got to know you got crowns on your head. You got to know that you're kingdom people. You're not going to claim something you are unaware of or don't believe in, right? Some of you just got to get back in the saddle. That's all. Some of you just got to get back in the saddle. So not everyone, uh, let me show you this. Starting with Abraham and the promise to him that his seed would be too numerous to count. Then it went on to David and David's bloodline was promised to always have an heir on the throne. And that is us. We're promised. We have multiple promises that if we call on his name, one of them, if we call on his name, we'll be saved. That's a promise. But we have to start there. So not everyone's going to accept this covenant. You know, people who don't accept it, lots of people don't accept it. Um, I'm trying to wrap this up here. When we enter into a relationship with God through the blood of Jesus Christ, the devil's kingdom is alerted. If you didn't deal with that stuff that alerted Satan, that, uh-oh, somebody just said yes and they mean it. Somebody just got into covenant with God. That means they're breaking covenant with me. That means as soon as they figure out how powerful they are in him, they're going to fight me. So I got to go after them and enforce everything I can enforce down that bloodline. That's why people get baptized in the water without a relationship with God first and don't have any understanding get attacked so much. Pay attention. Mark me. Mark my words. Watch the numbers. Like clockwork. We watch three young people get pregnant right after baptism. Yep. Right after they got baptized. And we just used to see the enemy just waiting down there, waiting to make a mockery out of them and out of their salvation and out of their baptisms. So when we understand what the blood of Jesus has given to us, which is a transaction, you gotta, you gotta understand it's a transaction of authority via the cross, then we can tell the devil to flee. And so what I'm trying to establish in us is build our faith. Because I can tell you right now, you can talk all day long and break curses, but if you don't believe in what you're doing and the enemy comes back to, to hound you, and say, you don't believe that, or you don't have the authority, or look, I still, and you still see the effects of the curse, because it ain't healed yet, and you, you just fall back into it. So you've got to have faith. It's got to, faith has to arise in this. 
Christians are walking in defeat because they're either in sin or they're not aware of their covenant dad. They're not aware of their covenant promises. There's an abundance of blessings for those who live according to God. And there is those curses who don't. Lastly, you can write these down. 1 John 5, 2 through 3, 18 and 21. By this we know that we have the, that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments. They're similar to what I read before, but they're not the same. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. Why is that in the New Testament? If the law is gone and the commandments are part of the law, why is it in the New Testament? Because love fulfills it. If you love, you'll just do it. You love somebody, how many times do you find yourself submitting to that somebody? Simply because you love them. Love makes you humble. Love makes you submit. That's the whole point in these, in these words, is that love, love, love. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. They're not. Is it burdensome to not kill your, kill somebody? Is it right? The only burden could be the honor your mother and father thing. That could be tough. So I know where you come from. So we know that uh, whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. We're born of God. It's time to keep ourselves. How do we keep ourselves? Shut the door on those bloodlines. So just plead the blood of Jesus. You know when. When Passover, uh, they put the blood, or when the, uh, when the Lord had come to bring back destruction to those people in Egypt, he said, put the blood of the lamb on the lentils of the door. We need to put them on the lentils of our heart. We're doing the same thing. Just think of it like that. We're applying the blood of Jesus to that place on our heart, and we're sanctifying and consecrating our heart. And in 2 Peter 2, 14, it's... It, it says this, with eyes full of adultery, they never stop sinning. They seduce the unstable. They are experts in greed. And they are an accursed brood. Mm -hmm. Accursed. And we've heard Paul talk about it. Anybody teaches another gospel? They're accursed. A couple of times he says that. First Corinthians uh, 15, 34. These people are slipping from the gospel. And that's what happens because the enemy will beat us down until he wins. And, and lastly, I'm going to skip over here to John 5, 14. Go read for yourself. But it said that Jesus healed a man from being blind. And then later he finds him in the temple and he said to him, Quit sinning, lest something else come upon you. If you open the door to sin, and I want you to know this to tell other people. If you get free and you open the door to, other, to sin again, you're going to get smacked around. Jesus talks about it in Luke 11. And you're going to get... Uh, Worse things will come upon you. Right. Jesus said it to the man he healed. He says it about demons that leave you. Seven more will come forth. Right. We've got to be logical here. Right. We better start counting the cost of Jesus. There is a cost. If you like to drink and you want to keep doing it, and I'm not preaching that at you guys, but anybody, I was one of those. If you want the party scene, don't take on Jesus and go get delivered. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Because you're going back to the party scene. Mm -hmm. I tried that. And so I stood in a bar one night saying, why can't I get drunk? Who asked God why he can't get drunk? And he just pointed around and said, this ain't your home anymore. I had a choice at that point. I choose that. I choose God. I chose God. Thank yeah. God. Right? <laughs> I, but, but I stood there and listened to the, almost an audible voice of God. This is not where you belong. So you know what, guys? You don't belong there. Your loved ones don't belong there. You're going to have to tell people to understand. With all reality, you know why you're this mess? Because you won't quit doing this. Yeah. Jesus will help you if you stop doing this. All right? So, how do you... Uh, there it goes. Steps uh, to get free from the curses of sin. Well, first you have to acknowledge your personal sin in every area that the Holy Spirit reveals to you. Okay? And you have to confess, repent, and renounce the sin. Ask God to forgive you and cleanse you. Um, separate yourself from the sin. Stop doing it if you haven't already. Come out from... Here's the other one. Come out from amongst those. Stop hanging yeah. with the sinners yeah. if you ain't ready to get them saved. Because if you can't get them saved, they're going to get you sunk. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Okay, thank you, Lord. Uh, ask God to lift any just curses he may allow to be in your life and your children's life. Nobody ever does this, but this is important. Break all ungodly soul ties with your ancestors or friends, family, or anyone else you may have sinned with or against. Command the demonic spirits that are enforcing the curses to leave you and never return. Okay, that's the principles of it. And it sounds real simple, and it, and it really isn't as complicated as you might think it is. 
um, if the curses are, are illegitimate, they don't have a right to be there because Satan is a liar. Mm -hmm. He will come and make you think he can stay because you're not going to do anything about it. As a result of Satan enforcing a curse that does not have a legal right, then he's trespassing. You have to command all witchcraft curses, hexes, vexes, spells, and incantations to be broken in Jesus' name. Command all assignments against you to be null and void. Command all demonic altars to be destroyed by the fire of God and your family's name removed like we did last week. So here's the thing. There are curses coming against Christians right now. And what happens, the best way that you can understand how they affect you, fatigue, sickness, a cloud over your thinking, you can't think, you can't, you're, you're, you're just like, I can't wait for the anointing to come so I can teach because I can't think all day long until I get here, right? There's other ways it can manifest too. You might just start fighting one calamity after another, one calamity after another, until you recognize it and go, well, what right does this have to happen to me? And then you start to fight. And then you start to tell it to stop. Then you start to say, I, you know, I commit, you know, there are remote viewers. They're astral projectors. They'll come into your view. They'll come into you where you're at in your atmosphere and they'll look upon what you're doing and they'll try to curse the works of God in your life. That's a fact. And Christians are doing it all the time because Christians are coming out saying, or witches are coming out saying they're Christians. That's right. not possible. You all seen that, right? right. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Yes. It's, I mean, I taught on it too. Okay. So. We're going to stand up and shake it off a little bit and get ready to, to pray through this. Let's uh, try to raise a little. Let's go ahead and pray in the spirit and get some uh, amplified. Let's break this. Yeah, leave it. We're going to walk you through. If anybody on there, if anybody's on Facebook or whoever may watch this later, um, I'm going to go pretty quick through these uh, prayers. You won't be able to see the slide. Um, but pray as the Lord leads you and pray as much of this as you can get picked up on your own. If you have a partner to help you pray, then you'll need a partner to help you pray. And if you're in this room and you want to take pictures so you can do it later, again, you can or you can just have these. That's okay. You can have these. All you have to do is ever ask me and I'm fine. I'll share them. I don't have mine freely. I've received as given. A lot of this is going to be the Bible. And first, we're going to pray scriptures. So, Father... We thank you, Lord. I just speak over my voice right now that my voice will not go out during this time, Lord. We pray, Mike and I pray, to cover the people of God in this room and that are listening to it live or later now. The road, Lord, that they be covered, Lord, that they be of faith, that no weapon for begins to shall prosper because this is the end. And we will condemn those voices. We will condemn those voices. We will send those voices back. Father, we ask right now that you release your angelic host to take this atmosphere, God, to strengthen us to pray. Even now, Lord, we stand against every hex, vex, spell, incantation, every voodoo thing released towards us. Whatever it is, we say no, it has no effect on us in Jesus' name. And Father, all mockers, we command silence. And if they're on the other line, we command silence in Jesus' name. Father, we ask you to blind those who would mock the work of the Holy Spirit. Blind those who would blaspheme the work of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Now, during these prayers, grab any curses that you see come up as you pray too and speak them out as well. Ready? Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. I ask you that you give ear to my words and consider my meditation. Give heed to my voice and my cry. For you are my King and my God. You hear me in the morning, in the evening and in the night. You are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness or evil, or evil. And, it and it shall not dwell with you. Have mercy on me, Have mercy on me. For, I am weak. for I am weak. Heal me. Heal me. For I am troubled and afflicted in my soul. I am troubled and afflicted in my soul. I confess the sins of my fathers. I confess the sins of my fathers. And my countrymen. And my countrymen. That we have followed the dictates. That we have followed the dictates of our own hearts. Of our own hearts. And we have even called ourselves blessed. And we have even called ourselves blessed. Though we did not follow in your ways. Though we did not follow in your ways. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Forgive us, O oh Lord. My father's sins, My father's sins have, held me hostage have held me hostage. 
and led me down the same paths of sin. And led me down the same paths of sin. Keeping my children, keeping my children from knowing you. From knowing you. I am weary. I am weary from the onslaught of attacks. From the onslaught of attacks. From my enemies. From my enemies who have been given right. Who have been given right to afflict and torment me. To afflict and torment me. Through sin. through sin. Father, Father in, the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, I renounce and repent, I renounce and repent of the sins of my ancestors and the sins of my people. I live among a people of perversion and I have been part of their perversions and their crooked ways. But oh God, I relent from any and all corruption of my fathers and of this world in which I live. I choose to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with my God. In Jesus' name, I confess and I renounce and I repent of the ancestral and cultural sins of adultery, of adultery. Idolatry. idolatry and I want you to stop right there and I want you to look and I want you to allow the Holy Spirit to scan your idols right now in Jesus name scan your idols is it identity is it a loved one, is it your child is it your ministry, is it your money is it your fear is it your health is it your lack of health thank you Holy Spirit, bring it up Bring it up, let him show you, and repent of it. I repent, I repent for all sexual sin, for all sexual sin, sin perversion, perversion, fornication, fornication witchcraft, witchcraft, satanic worship, satanic worship through various forms of false religion, through various forms of false religion, and music. I repent, I repent for homosexuality. I, I when you say this, I stand in the gap for my nation. I stand in the gap for my nation. And my children. And my children. And Father, I repent. Father, I repent for their sins of homosexuality. For their sins of homosexuality. I, and I, you know what? Let's go one more. We repent. We repent for the sins of our government. For the sins of our government. For allowing. For allowing. All of the sins, all of, the sins of, homosexuality of homosexuality to be heaped on our heads to be heaped on our and, heads, and our children's heads. And our children's heads. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. We repent, we repent for, child abuse for child abuse and child molestation. And child molestation. If you know of somebody who has molested or abused a child and you've covered it up, I want you to repent right now and I want you to be ready to deal with it with the Lord. Not in here, but I want you to repent for it. If you know somebody, if you've done it, or if you know somebody and you've helped cover it up, and I think somebody may have witnessed something, and I want you to deal with that. Maybe it's your bloodline. I repent, Father, for child molestation. I repent for child molestation. For anger, for, anger. for, rage, for rage, for sinning in anger, for sinning in anger. And, and violence against the weak. And violence against the weak. For I repent for all forms of drug and alcohol abuse. I repent for lying. I repent for lying. And manipulating. I repent for I repent for controlling others. I repent for tax evasion. Child support evasion. Not tithing or giving. And I repent for all bondage to sin. I confess, renounce, and repent of allowing a ruling spirit. Lock this in. I repent for allowing a ruling spirit of lying, Jealousy, Jealousy, pride, pride, pride fear, 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 perversion, perversion error, error, seduction, seduction boredom, boredom, and bondage, and bondage to, inflict family. to inflict my family. I repent of my own sin. I repent of my own sin. In these areas, in these areas and for not training up my child. And for not training up my child. 
in the ways of the Lord, the the Lord. or for teaching and instructing them in the word of God. I ask for forgiveness and mercy over these sins and any sins I may not have been made aware of. How many of you understand when the reason you feel this heaviness is because God is releasing a spirit of repentance? A spirit of mourning, a spirit of crying. Some of you are feeling that. Don't fight it. The weight in the room is, is, is exactly what God wants it to be. It is so that we understand the weight and condition of our own sin, our generational sin, our cultural sin. If we really understand the destruction of sin, it will make us sick. We won't want to partake. And when we see it, we'll be quicker to repent and, le and less likely to judge it. You know what I'm saying? Repenting for it, less likely to judge it. We'll also know how to break the curses of that uh, when we see it in our churches, in our families, or whatever. In Jesus' name, I break any and all ungodly soul ties, binds, holds, and demonic connections created through sin between me and any of my ancestors. And so I want you to stop right there and let the Lord show you. Holy Spirit, we ask you to show you our ancestors or, or people in our culture, God, that we have been bound to sin with and we need to break a soul tie. Father, people, we have sinned with drugs, sinned with drinking, sinned with fornication, any kind of sin, God, or our parents have. Father, in Jesus' name, I break all ungodly and demonic sins and constructs built between me and my father my earthly father in any type of rebellious lawless deeds oh god i break them in jesus name i forgive my father for his lawlessness and his failure to raise me up in the knowing of you god so I just showed you how to do it. If you need to do that, do it. If you speak it under your breath low, if you need help with it, you can do it later. In Jesus' name, I break. In Jesus' name, I break. Jesus name. All ungodly soul ties. All ungodly soul ties. Binds, holds, and demonic connections. Binds, holds, and demonic connections. Connected through me. Connected through or connected me. to me. Connected to me. Through sin. Through sin. Between me. Between me. And everyone. And everyone. I have committed sin with. I have committed sin with. Or acted out in sin against. Or acted out in sin against. I'm going to tell you right now, get to forgiven. Whoever you're holding hostage, it's time to release them tonight. If it's yourself, release yourself. If it's somebody you love. It's time. Forgive. Tonight, forgive. Whether that ever, ever, ever manifests in the natural, you have to forgive. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we give your spirit permission to seek our, seek our hearts. Spotlight on us what is foul and unclean, who we haven't forgiven. Amen. Help me forgive tonight. Help me forgive tonight. God help them forgive me tonight. Send the spirit of forgiveness to those who hate me. Father, I ask as I humbly come before your throne room. Will you, lift Will you lift any just curses, any just curses off, of me, off of me, my family, my family due, to these sins, due to these sins, and acknowledge, and, acknowledge that the, and I acknowledge, and I acknowledge that, the Christ, that the blood of Jesus Christ testifies to my innocence tonight. Testifies to my innocence tonight. Glory. Glory. Glory, glory, Lord. I acknowledge, I acknowledge that, through sin, that through sin, I gave Satan, I gave Satan and, his and, right and his servants a right to inflict his will upon my life and my children's lives through curses. Through curses. But, now, but now, I take his rights away in Jesus' name. I take authority in Jesus' name over all curses. Over all curses. 
Spells. 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 Hexes. 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 Vexes. 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 Incantations. Incantations. Oaths or, or declarations. Made over me. Made over me. Or my family. Or my family. By me. By me. Or anyone else. Or anyone else. And that are enforcing curses. That are enforcing curses. In my life. In my life. And I break them now. And I break them now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I break the curse of poverty. I break the curse of poverty. Debt. 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 Bankruptcy. Bankruptcy. Job loss. Job loss. Pestilence. Pestilence. Planting and sowing but never reaping. Planting and sowing but never reaping. I break reaping. it now. I break it now. I shall reap. I shall reap. All the goodness. All the goodness. Of God's. Of God's. Blessings. Blessings. I shall reap. I shall reap. Everything I sow. Everything I sow. God help me sow in righteousness. God help me sow in righteousness. I break, I break the, curse the curse over my land, over my land both, physically both physically and spiritually, and spiritually. That, is that is stealing my inheritance and my children's inheritance and, my children's inheritance. and, my children's inheritance. and giving my children, and giving my children to, heathen to heathen men and women instead of those who serve God. I break the curse of hostility towards one another. Towards one another. Nah. In my family, in my family and in my sphere of influence. In my sphere of influence. Let's go again. That's a zinger right there. Yeah. I break, I break the, the curse of hostility, of hostility towards me, towards me, and and towards one another. And towards one another. In my family, in my family and in my sphere of influence. Got to raise up saints, burp it out, yawn it out, cough it out, but break that curse yeah. in Jesus' name. I break. I break the curses of plagues, the curses of plagues and prolonged, and prolonged and mysterious, and sicknesses, and mysterious sicknesses and disease. And disease. I break the curse of fever, I break the curse of fever inflammation, inflammation, nerve damage, nerve damage arthritis, arthritis, boils. boils. I break the curse of boils. I break the curse of nerve damage. I break the curse of fibromyalgia. I break the curse of allergies. I break the curse of allergies. And multiple chemical sensitivity. And multiple chemical sensitivity. I break the curse of, of uh, I break the curse of all physical affliction. I break the curse of all physical afflictions over my life, over my, and my life, children's lives. And my children's I break the curses. I break the curses of mental illness, of mental illness, of madness, of madness, senility, senility, confusion, confusion. Split minds, split minds, and double mindedness. And double mindedness. I break the curses. I break the curses of blindness, of blindness, and deafness. And deafness. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Last one. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. Oh, let's back this up. We're going to command some spirits to go in Jesus' name. Right now, we're going to put on our, our, our uh, authority to command some spirits to go. I want you to begin to speak into your body. Robert, I want you to, I'm going to speak something for you, and then I want you to just claim it over your mind. In Jesus' name, Mike, will you help with me on that one? In Jesus' name, we break. All curses, hexes and vexes, spells and incantations that was spoken or injected into this soldier. All the way back to the war that he served in. We break the authority of the commanding officers in the natural and in the spiritual. Every curse inflicting him. And holding his mind hostage, holding his nerves hostage, holding his muscles hostage, we break it in Jesus' name. Father, I speak the fire of God. I want you to receive this. I speak the fire of God, Robert, into your bloodline. All the way down, sexual sin, sexual sin, sexual sin, womanizing, womanizing, rape, abuse, down your bloodline. I break the power of that, inflicting you in Jesus' name, off of you, off of your seeds, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All that has been dried up in you, Robert. All that is dried up in the name of Jesus Christ. I command a breaking now. I command a breaking now. All the seeds that's been planted in you from the Lord. Come germinate now. Germinate. Come up to see the light. 
in Jesus' name. Come up to see the light in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. All right, come, come, come on. We're going to break some, cast some spirits out. Energy's fierce in here. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. You're going to name your own spirits, by the way. I'm going to do the best I can. You can call your own out as you go. I command. I command. Every demonic spirit. Every demonic spirit. Of infirmity. Of infirmity. Every serpent spirit. Every serpent spirit. Every spirit of mental illness. Every spirit of mental illness. Every spirit. Spirit. Enforcing curses, Enforcing curses. Down, my bloodline. down my bloodline to lead me in Jesus' name. I pray, I command the spirit of covenant breaking, I command all covenant breaking spirits. I command all covenant breaking spirits over my marriage, over my marriage or any relationships to be broken now in Jesus' name. Speak that in Spanish to him. Have him break that covenant breaking spirit. Can I watch Shadow Book again to the end of the day? Father, electrify the bodies in this place. Purify. Let them feel your energy, God. We ask you for mercy. We ask you to infuse them with power and healing. We break the power of Jezebel and the witchcraft curses, seduction and pornography, those filthy demons enforcing it and enforcing lust. We command it to break in Jesus' name. Say no. Say no. We command a release in Jesus' name off the church. Off the church in Jesus' name. Lingering disorders. Every spirit that is attaching to your body of lingering disorders. We command to leave you now in Jesus' name. Fatigue. We command spirits of fatigue and sleeplessness. And idolatry, every spirit enforcing accusations to leave in Jesus' name. Spirits of gossip and slander and religion, leave me in Jesus' name. I'm going to say something, some of you ain't going to like. Don't stay with me on this, but I'm going to say it. We declare war on the religious spirit in the house in Jesus' name. No more. No more submission. The Father commands submission, and we shall be a submitted people. We will be a submitted people, Lord. We will not bow to the head of religion anymore in Jesus' name. We will not bow to religion. We will not bow to getting it right. We will not bow to perfection. We bow to grace and mercy and love in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Lord, infuse us. Infuse us. Infuse us. I command every lion spirit out of this house right now in Jesus' name. Every lion spirit, get out in Jesus' name. We don't want you. You ain't welcome. Get out in Jesus' name. Go. Go. We will not hear lies anymore. Can you just say that in Jesus' name? I will hear the lies I am hearing. I will not hear the lies of Satan anymore. Heavenly Father, in you I have found my freedom. Father, and you I, I thank you for salvation, I thank you for salvation. Deliverance, and healing. deliverance and healing that has come, that has come. will continue to come forth, continue to come forth. Through, the the through the prayers of the righteous. Though I once was afflicted in sin and sorrow, <laughs> Jesus be became acquainted Jesus with these things, with and, these things. He and He set me free. And as such, and I, confess, I confess I am set free, am set free by, by the Word. word. Fill, me to Fill me to overflowing with the fruit of Your Holy Spirit. Let all works of iniquity be far from me. Straighten, strengthen me in faith and in deed. That I might show works worthy of repentance. Break the bronze heavens and iron earth, O God. And make my life productive for your glory. Bring back the rain. Bring back the rain. And provision, provision over my family's life. Over my family's life. You are the rock. You are the rock. Your work is perfect. Your work is perfect. And all your ways are just so God. All your ways are just so God. You are a God of truth. You are God of truth. And without injustice. And without injustice. Righteous and upright are you. Righteous and upright are you. And I declare. And I declare. 
that all those who put their trust in you, O oh God, shall rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend us. Let us also, Lord, who love your name, be joyful in you. For you, O oh Lord, will bless us, the righteous, with favor. You will surround us with a shield.